St. James South and the Barbados Labour Party. Good night to one and all. You know, St. James South has a special place in my heart. Of course, it can't compare with St. James North. But the first place I lived after I got married 22 years ago was just around the corner in Husband's Gardens. And uh, my baptism on the political platform came in this constituency, helping my cousin Liz Thompson win her first election into the House of Assembly of Barbados in 1994. And, uh, you know, that part of, of, of my history can't be removed. And, you know, it, it's always a pleasure to come and speak on behalf of a fine lady, Sandra Husbands, in this constituency. Now, Joe spoke very glowingly of Sandra. Um, he could not, however, speak about an association of Sandra which in my case dates back 33 years, as I always say. Because Sandra and I, just out of secondary school, went into the University of the West Indies, Cave Hill, at the same time. And we did a couple of law courses together. And ironically, ironically, we used to sit side of each other in at least one of those courses. And I really and truly, really and truly look forward to sitting side of Sandra in the Parliament of Barbados next month. As Joe said, in her 50 odd years of life, there is no one in this Barbados who could say anything bad about Sandra Husbands in terms of her morality, in terms of her integrity, in terms of her character. I challenge anyone to say anything bad about her. And in an era, and in an era where those factors must take primary place, when you go to vote in an election for someone who will have the power and authority over your quality of life for the next five years, that must count for something, something tremendous. You know, because the Dems have made character and integrity an issue in this campaign, but we can deal with that later. No one could speak ill of Sandra Husbands, and I have known her, as I said, for 33 years. Sandra has not come off the street as some of the DLP candidates and say, I won't get in Parliament. Sandra comes with a record of commitment and service to the people of Barbados. Sandra has been president of the Small Business Association for six years, making a fine contribution to a major engine of economic growth and industrial development in this country. When Sandra was president of the Small Business Association, we had about 15,000 businesses registered on the corporate registry of Barbados. About 15,000. Now under the Dems and the Kelmans of this world and, 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 and the George Hudson's and those kind of jokers, political jokers, it now down 11 or 10,000. A lot of small businesses gone out of business. And with small businesses going out of business, people losing jobs, employment, unemployment being created, 16,000 people in this Barbados having lost their jobs in the private sector in the last five years and 22 months, tw five years and 22 days of DLP rule. A national disgrace of the highest order. You know, in any country such as Barbados, small, open, developed economy, small business is key. You know, don't let's talk about government jobs because the government doesn't really produce, you know. The government 
a lot of bureaucracy and red tape. The engine of growth in any society, like Barbados, as it is in bigger countries such as the United States, is small business. And Sandra Husbands, Hus Sandra Husbands comes to the people of St. James South and the people of Barbados with an outstanding, extraordinary record of presidency of that association for the last six, for, for six years. Sandra has served at regional level as well because she's been vice president of the Caribbean Small Business Association as well. So her record of public service is there for all to see. That isn't even touching her professional service, as Joe said, as someone who trains people in human resources and personal development. So Sandra is fit to walk up the stairs of the lower house. Joe has spoken, and I agree totally as a man that we need more women in the lower house of Barbados. You know, women look at things from a different viewpoint than we men, and you know, we, we have to accept that as men. You know, and the Democratic Labour Party has never really respected women, you know. You know, one of the biggest jokes so far of this campaign is them holding an all women's, as I understand it, political meeting somewhere about Barbados. I don't even know where it is, saying how we treat women badly and a lot of nonsense. Well, this Barbados Labour Party was the party that brought the first woman into the lower house of Barbados way back before most of us here were born. My cousin, in fact, Ermi, born in 1951, as Sir Grant Lee Adams got adult suffrage that black people of our color here could vote, a woman in parliament. No woman in parliament between that time and 25 years after in 19, in, in 20 years after in 1971. And that woman in parliament, Gertz Eastman, told that Errol Barragan teach her the facts of life, a big woman with six children, and, and Barragan teach her about the facts of life. And, and they talk about how we treat women. And, and as Joe said, Dame Billy Miller, Liz Thompson, Mia Motley, a whole host of women we had as cabinet ministers. The first time the Dems have made a woman a minister of government in this particular term. You all know that? Before this term, five years, 22 days ago, the Dems never had a woman as a cabinet minister. And we had women as cabinet ministers way back in 1976. So let's, let, 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 let's forget about the deception, lies, and propaganda, because that is what the DLP stands for, you know. Deception, lies, and propaganda. Let's forget about that and the circus that parades itself as a political party in Barbados. And let's deal with facts. We need Sandra Husbands in the lower house of Barbados. That is a fact. We need someone who understands small business development, who brings a human element to people's toil in this Barbados, where you have unemployment, they say 12%, the padding, the, 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 the employment in government right now, I say it more than 12. I know in St. James North it is at least 25, because I walk in every single house out there. And I am told by Sandra, and I verily believe that it, about 30% or more in Hainesville down here. And this is nothing to do now with international recession, you know, because the United States, where the Dems are comparing their political leader to the president, the United States, in the last six months leading up to the presidential election, every month 120, 150,000 jobs being created, you know. So how they're comparing one fumble stroke to President Obama really and truly is a serious defamation on the character of President Obama. Because America creating enough jobs, St. Lucia 
Now the best place to do business in the Caribbean, believe it or not, Barbados no longer the best place. And Barbados used to be pride of praise no, a long time ago. Guyana, with all its racial problems and all of that, economic, the, the economy growing at 4%, 4% a year. Bahamas, it growing. Antigua, it growing. Bermuda, it growing. About six Caribbean countries that grow in other small island developing states around the world, Botswana, Mauritius, Singapore, of course, size of Barbados, growing at 8% a year. And we have a government here led by an indecisive, visionless, hopeless man. Telling you that we can't do no better and, 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 you know, bear with us. And, and, you know, give us another chance to do what? To take us further into a junk economy and a junk society now. We say no. And we have the unique opportunity in two weeks' time to change the course that we have been on in the last five years by voting for Sandra Husbands in St. James South and for voting for Barbados Labour Party candidates throughout the length and breadth of this country. Now, one of the major issues in this constituency must be the issue of housing and land. I mean, I, I believe, Sandra, that probably about a third of the, the voters in this constituency live in housing areas. I, I, I may be on, wrong, but I, I know I can't be too far out from what I remember when, you know, I used to campaign here and all of that. And many of the people in this constituency who live in the Hainesville and in other parts of Barbados, same just down the road in St. Michael, north, northwest, for instance, live in housing areas where the Dems promised that within 90 days they would give you ownership of houses if you're living there for over 20 years. They're going to give you away, get away, get you free. And you know, within the first 90 days, you had a movie star, Minister of Housing. You know, if he was good looking, he could be a movie star because he liked the press. He liked the TV. You had a, 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 a minister of housing going about, you know, giving a letter to the people. And, and, and on the LPC, BC TV, handing out these letters and, and front page of paper and women hugging him up like if he is the Messiah now, the new Messiah. Fooling people that the letter... It's tantamount to ownership of the house. Fooling poor, vulnerable people in Hainesville. You know? But you don't have to be a lawyer like me to know that you can't carry a letter to a bank or credit union and say, Mr. Manager, look at this letter that I get from NHC here now. I, I know, I know on this unit in Hainesville. I want to borrow $50,000 to improve it, or, 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 or to put it up as collateral now to educate my child or my grandchild. Up to now, five years and 22 days after the election, after they promised people within 90 days they're going to give you the land, give it away, give you the house, give it away, the unit. You know, the majority of people, as I understand it, in Hainesville, don't have ownership of the house. And, and I, I would also know because two things, I used to be deputy chairman of NHC in our second term. And as a lawyer, I work for quite a few of these people who come. So they bring to me now the letter from NHC saying, you know, we can transfer the land to you. And it sit on a file in my office and nothing don't happen. And, and, and the credit union, who, who they're going to 
would say would, would be writing saying, but look, man, where's the position, man? And you write NHC and say, but what happened NHC, man? You tell the people five years ago that, that you're transferring the housing unit to them, what's going on? And you, and you don't get any response. And you follow it up with phone calls. Well, you know, man, we can't transfer it yet. This, that, that. But you in Hainesville, well, not so much because if I recall, this one the Hainesville box. But the people about Barbados in housing units promised that they will get ownership or after 20 years of these houses, of these housing units. And the people who had paid towards them under the Barbados Labour Party not being refunded their money, you know. The money gone through the Edo's at NHC into the sinking sand that is NHC, because that is what NHC is. Let me tell you, I used to be deputy chairman, so I know. But that is the circus that is the Democratic Labour Party government. Fool people fulfilled only 10% or less of their manifesto promises but yet told you that they will not lie or steal and come tonight vilifying good Barbados Labour Party candidates who only here to try to make a contribution to the country, you know, and to serve you, the people of St. James South, and the people of Barbados, with passion and with vigor to build a better tomorrow for us and for our children. That is all we're looking to do. But they talk about decency and... Uh, it, the, the only thing they're putting forward to commend their political leader to the people of Barbados is that he decent. Now what decent man every time he speaks vilifies some sector of Barbados? You know, we're talking about Alexandra, which to pay $600,000 for a commission $600,000 that could repair many people's houses in St. James South and St. James North. But you take up $600,000 for a commission, put in money in DLP lawyers' hands, got all of them DLP lawyers, you know, that could have gone to repair houses in St. James South and St. James North to say what everybody in Barbados know before the commission, you know. And then, the wait till the middle of the school year now to make a decision and to transfer teachers. And, and the Prime Minister, because some teachers say man re won't resist, he can insult agricultural workers and, and say, well, look, man, if, if, if we can't solve problems, man, let me, let me close down the schools and university and, and go back in the cane fields. Like if agricultural workers who don't have any meaningful purpose in life. That is what he's saying to the agricultural workers in St. James South and St. James North, you know. And we say that he decent. No, 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 no. I'm bringing character and integrity in an issue. A man who leads a cabinet of Barbados that could not even now pass an integrity act, which they said they were going to bring in forthwith. Because the integrity bill dead, you know, because the Governor General hasn't assented to it. But certain members of the DLP cabinet never wanted any integrity legislation passed. They never, and, and I can leave you to guess who, because they want to declare no assets, because you were going to know where the assets from. But Sandra Husbands and Edmund Hickson and others will have no difficulty declaring assets to any parliament or people or commission, integrity commission, because we ain't thief nobody money. So there is a clear and distinct difference between the choice that you have to make on February the 21st. You have, on the one hand, a party, including people like Sandra Husbands, led by a tried and proven and experienced political leader, 
a man who brought the unemployment rate of Barbados down from 25% in September 1994 to below 7% in January 2008. He told you that he would create 30,000 30, jobs. He, in fact, created 35,000 jobs about this Barbados, bringing it down less than 7% unemployment rate, the lowest since the abolition of slavery 175 years ago. That is what Owen Arthur did. We have the unique opportunity to make him prime minister again. On the other hand, you have a, a DLP, deception, lies, and propaganda, that told you that the job number one, two, and three was cost of living, to deal with cost of living. But you, you, we didn't know that they meant to increase cost of living. 30% increase in cost of living in five years, 22 days. And government servants who would have claimed they have protected the jobs, not having any salary increase for four years. But in fact, when you have no salary increase and the cost of living gone up 30%, you ain't going to be no Aristotle or Homer or any of them kind of people so that the prime minister loves to quote to know that, in fact, you have got a 30% decrease in salary. Well, the ordinary woman that's struggling, five, six children of which I'm sure, Sandra, that have many in this in this, in this constituency, struggling both with a few dollars here. It ain't need no genius to tell you that that is effectively a 30% cut in salary. They have failed this DLP on every major economic sector in this country. They have failed on housing. Don't mind them coming and tell you how they should be re-elected on their housing policy alone. The NHC has provided 400 housing solutions, 400 housing solutions in five years, 22 days, 400. About 100 in Coverley, the most in St. Philip, of course. Anybody in St. James South really get any housing solution? I, 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 I mean, you, you got to tell me, I know nobody in St. James North, Ganey. I know that for the last two years, I've been hearing about land being opened up to be sold in, in West Terrace, Sandra, I believe. But I ain't, I ain't see any visual evidence of anything similar to a house going up new out there when I pass. And for two whole years, they've been talking about that. They've been talking about they were, that one of their manifesto promises was that they're going to sell land at $5 a square foot. You know that nobody in Barbados has got any government land at $5 a square foot up to now, and they're still talking about it. And you have smoke screens and, you know, like disappearing acts. I mean, Ford's Road two Fridays ago, big pomp and ceremony handing over 16 keys to housing units, turnkey to call it. And, and as CBC TV gone, the people got to get back the keys to NHC. The people in, in the houses, go out there tonight and see if you see anybody in the house. The people don't even have a rental agreement up to today. The people don't, who the handed the keys to and took them back, have no rental agreement. They don't know how much rent they're supposed to pay to the NHC. Bear pump and ceremony, deception, lies and propaganda. That is all this DLP is about. And courts go and take back the furniture, the nice furniture that you saw on the TV and, and in the newspapers. Courts take them back four days after. Man, we can't, we, we can't do nothing about this. And they're telling you tonight that on that policy alone, they should be re-elected as the government of Barbados. Now, I would more go with the Minister of Social Care when, like four months ago, all of them were breaking for the self and the breaking for the self now. I mean, 
the one that running down here, he breaking for himself too. Because it looked to me like if he running for to be leader of the opposition. But we don't vote for no opposition in this country, we vote for government. And the BLP winning this government, and Sandra Husbands was the part of the winning team. We don't vote for no opposition. So if he want to run as a leader of the opposition, let him fight with St. Clair and them kind of men. So as we condemn, that ain't we problem. The people of Barbados want better governance. The people of Barbados want a better tomorrow. The people of Barbados want to be rescued from this total junk economy that the Dems have now put us in. And, 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 and you know, we talk about character and integrity and 35,000 35, Barbadians can't get the money out of Clico simply because the interest of one man who happened to be pal, not only of the late Prime Minister, but the present one, his interest must be put before 35,000 Barbadians. On that alone, we must vote for a Barbados Labour Party candidate throughout the length and breath of this Barbados. In any other developed country or country with a developed system of governance, somebody will be locked up over that. That you got a late Prime Minister's law firm facilitating the transfer of $3.3 million, $3.3 million by calling it legal fees and the next day or two, according to the forensic report of Clico, ending up in Leroy Paris' hand. And the despicable thing about it is that the wife of that late Prime Minister had in nomination papers today to run. She should have been made to answer the question and to account as manager, office manager of that law firm. What is the position with this $3.3 million that, that 35,000 pe people in Barbados know who want who want to start small business that Sandra husband can help them develop or who want to send a child for education or a grandchild can't put up no collateral because the car back get back $35,000 because men like Leroy Paris got the money, $3.3 million and the rest just because of campaign financing. These people put money into the coffers of DLP marginal seats last election. Any politician, any politician must be able to tell their best friend or their closest relative, look, you're doing foolishness and I ain't supporting you in that. You cannot sacrifice the interests of the wide majority of Barbarians on the altar of expediency for a best friend. Sandra Husbands would not do that. Edmund Hinkson will not do that. The BLP will not do that. Sandra Husband stands before you as someone with tremendous morality, with tremendous integrity, with unchristian character, with skills to help lead Barbados out of the doldrums, economic and societal that we find ourselves in. She must walk up the steps of Parliament. I implore you to vote for Sandra, to be Member of Parliament of St. James South. We are asking you to vote to help elect a Barbados Labour Party government on the 21st of February to help, to help Owen Arthur become Prime Minister of this country again. And in St. James Law, to give me the opportunity to be Member of Parliament and to, good, and to do good by the people of this country so that we can build a better tomorrow today. I thank you. Things hard, I regret, I ain't gonna